the money printing is going, uh, continuing on just, uh, just, uh, very consistently. I'm pulling up my latest thread here just to refer, uh, users to, if you look at the, it's tweet 29 of the, uh, it's pinned to my profile, crypto underscore voices on Twitter, uh, tweet 29 will show you the trailing 12 month inflation rate of each nations, currencies, money supply. And again, the Eurozone nations are, are one, uh, there's 19 countries there. You will see, um, Canada, as you said, 204% in the last year, 62% for the Euro, uh, 60% for the, uh, United, uh, for, excuse me, for the United Kingdom, 60% Turkey, United States is, is down not too much in a, in the distant, you know, fifth to last, sixth to last at 50% trailing 12 months. That's, that's March of this year divided by March of last year. Now, obviously we caught COVID exactly during this time period. So it's big numbers uh, there, but those are. Those are big numbers. Um, and obviously, again, I'm not making any comment about whether it's needed or whether uh, uh, the COVID stimulus was needed. I'm just saying these, these are the numbers, big, big numbers. And another thing I would say that the other uh, global sort of uh, tweet where you can see this is tweet 38, tweet 38. Um, there you see from basically 1970 to 2021, 2021 being the first three months of 2021 annualized. 2020 was second highest ever as far as money printing goes it's 35 percent compounded 35 percent basically annually during that year and that that's taking all of the different you know all the numbers i just mentioned right like us eurozone uk the pound all, all those things um and then how do i find sort of a global average well you have to weight them so i weight them you can absolutely do this it's not a not a trick of any game. I mean, I'm, I'm taking the actual numbers, the actual inflation numbers, units on units, euros on euros, yen on yen, dollar on dollar. And then you weight those numbers each year by the value of that respective currency's monetary base in dollar terms. You have to do it in dollar terms. I mean, dollar is the world's reserve currency, as they say. It's the most quoted world's reserve. It's what most quoted currency in the world. Every central bank has the dollar rate on their main page. Uh, dollars are you know, clearly the most liquid fiat coin uh, in the world. So you take the, uh, the relative weight of each currency's monetary base, uh, you, you apply that weight to their actual trailing 12 month uh, growth per the year or the three month annualized in the case of 2021. And you'll get the chart that you get in uh, uh, tweet 38, tweet 38. And uh, yeah, 2020 was 35% annually. The only, the highest, Global money printing happened in 2008, the financial crisis that we talked about, 46% per annum globally. Uh, 2020 was 35% per annum globally, and 2021 is 29% globally, which on track is going gonna, is gonna to be in fifth place um, of like the modern fiat era, basically since 1970. That's what I have. So it's continuing on. Uh, I would then probably direct listeners to um, basically the end. It is tweet... Bear with me for a second. Tweet 67. There's a graph, very detailed. Uh, not sorry, not graph. It's a table of uh, all of the the top 30 floating currencies in the world. You see, it's about 27.8 trillion in U.S. dollar equivalent value. 27.8 trillion. And again, that's I, I might have not even said it clearly during this pod, but that's the money supply that is most equivalent with Bitcoin. So we have Bitcoin, this famous, unbelievable new digital currency that arose. You know. 11, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, um, the ultimate supply, everyone knows it's famous, 21 million units, 21 million BTC. What does that number compare with? And so that was another reason I started this whole thing was, you know, you see all these various money supplies. I don't want to maybe get into that too much uh, here, but um, all these different money supplies talking about gold, silver, platinum, palladium, you know, M1, M2, M3. What compares with 21 million Bitcoin? Well, it was this thing that was never published anywhere. You had to actually go on to each central bank's balance sheet, find it yourself. Some, in some cases, you know, be in the firewalled central bank, like the Bank of China, or uh, just poor, extremely poor. Like there's no APIs that work in any of these <laughs> websites. <laughs> yeah, so much of it is, is, is manual. It, some of that is, is getting better for me when, with the new website that I mentioned, but um, it's, been, it's been a slog for sure. So anyway, the, all of it is summarized there uh, as of March 31st, 2021, uh, the trailing 12 months, which I mentioned, the actual last month annualized, which has the most noise, 
but at the last month annualized was about 72% uh, globally. Uh, trailing 12 months was 37%, as I mentioned. And since the begin date of each currency on the table, which, which varies, there's about half of them that were going on since 1970. And for the other half that weren't there, they just weren't part of the pie. They weren't part of the balancing the weight during that period. So you can totally do it. It's not, not a problem. It's not hard to calculate. I mean, as long as you, you know, have the will to do it, it's not, it's not difficult. You get to about 12.9% compounded per annum since, since the start date of basically all fiat currencies in the database. 